Welcome to this ICAST Signal Processing Clarity Challenge. What we're trying to do is get competitors to use speech enhancement techniques to improve the signals for hearing aids so people with a hearing loss can hear speech and noise better. The challenge is running now until February 2023. So why run this challenge? Well, we have a big problem with hearing loss across the world. Here's some statistics from the WHO. Currently, it's 430 million people with significant hearing loss. That's rising. It's going to rise to about a billion people by 2050 because the population is generally ageing. Now, if we look worldwide, only about 17% of people who could benefit from hearing treatment actually get it. And the most common hearing treatment is a hearing aid, as you can see in this picture. Now, at ISCASP, I'm sure I'll see lots of brilliant papers on speech enhancement and speech processing, but most of those will not consider people with a hearing loss. So one of the reasons to run this challenge is to try and raise awareness of this big problem and get more people thinking, oh, I've got this great speech enhancement tool. How can it help people, this big part of the population who have got hearing loss? So what is the scenario we're looking at? It's a typical domestic living room. We've got some noise around. I've put on a picture of a washing machine and a television here, but it could also be someone else talking and getting in the way of you hearing what you really want to hear. What you want to hear is the guy with the purple hair who is saying a quick sentence. It's only seven to ten words long. And you've got to pick that out from the background noise. So it's a typical speech and noise task, a typical speech enhancement task. We have head rotation happening with the listener to make things a little bit more complicated as well. And we'll provide you with all the tools and all the data that you need to really get going with this uh, and apply your speech enhancement techniques. So let's look at the baseline that we're giving you. So we need to first of all generate some examples of speech and noise. So we have a scene generator here, which creates those examples. We'll give it, you've got data you can just download. You don't need to run that scene generator if you don't want, but it's there. If you want to augment the data uh, with standard augmentation techniques, that's allowable within the rules as well. If we look at anything to do with uh, people with hearing loss, we need to we need to individualize processing for the characteristics of the listener. So as well, this baseline plucks out a random audiogram which characterizes the threshold of hearing. We've then split what is a traditional hearing aid process into two parts where there's a speech enhancement part and there's an amp amplification part. Now the amplification part, which is in yellow marked hearing aid here, is actually what we're going to give you and that's going to be fixed. So what happens when you lose your hearing is your threshold hearing rises and therefore the quiet bits you can't hear. So what you have to do is take the quiet bits and amplify them and compress them into the bit of hearing that you do have. And so therefore what you'll find in there will be some dynamic range compression to sort of amplify the quiet bits and to compress it into the bit of hearing that the person still has. It will do that in particular frequency bands using a particular fitting function. You're more than welcome to look at the details there, but we're fixing that. What we're wanting you to look at is what's in this uh, sort of light lilac block, which is the speech enhancement here. So we want to see how well you can improve the speech and noise, suppress the noise, enhance the speech, so the hearing aid has the best possible signal to work at. Now on the hearing aids, there's multiple microphones, so it could be a beam forming technique might form part of what you do and it could be a variety of speech enhancement processes beyond that. When we've run previous challenges, we've had a variety, a huge variety of techniques. Of course, deep learning is popular, but there's other ways of doing this as well. So your speech enhancement should hopefully improve the speech and noise. Our hearing aid will do the amplification for you. And then we have this red block, which is the final part of the evaluation. So we have two uh, techniques called HASPI and HASCI. These are metrics that are developed Haspi is uh, intelligibility and Haskey is quality. So we're getting intelligibility and quality scored and we're basically averaging those two. The reason to have both those involved is that you could have something very intelligible in speech which sounds very unnatural. So we're trying to balance the two sort of kind of critical pieces. So that's what we're looking for you to do. And as I said, the sort of kind of key bit we're trying to, we want you to work on is that bright yellow bit where you take the hearing characteristics, you take the speech and noise, and you suppress the noise and enhance the speech. And everything else is a part, is the bits that we supply or, or are fixed. So the key data that you'll get, as I said, you can use the scene generator, but we provide you loads of already. We have the typical training and development scenes, and we also have evaluation. Now the evaluation obviously is not launched till so near the deadline, so it's uh, next year you'll get the evaluation scene. 
Those are all based around a simulation model uh, that we have, but we're also going to create a real data set where we get people in the room talking and recording. Uh, and, and so try and get rid of the simulation model out of the chain. We're still working on that, but that again is only going to be released in February anyway. So more details on that to, to follow. So here's the schedule we're working to. So we've just launched the challenge. 1st of February, you'll get the test and evaluation sets. 8th of February, uh, you'll then have to submit the process signals to us and technical reports. Those reports need to say how you've kind of done the processing so we can evaluate whether you've met the rules or not. Um, we encourage people to open source code, but it's not compulsory. 13th of February, we will release the results and the rank ordering and the top five will go forward to uh, submit a paper for ICASP. Uh, you've then got to quickly turn around the papers for ICASP um, in the 20th of February. They get reviewed in the usual kind of process, but in a very quick turnaround. And ICASP itself is in June where we'll have a special session detailing it. Now, we have a really detailed website with lots of things on it. I just wanted to highlight a couple of things on that before finishing. The first of all is in the rule section, the computational limitations that we have. Um, so I think most of the rules are pretty obvious. Please read them and make sure you comply with them. Uh, and if you've got any questions, please just get in contact. But this latency requirement often causes a little bit of confusion, but it's really important for hearing aids. Processing has to be effectively real time because otherwise people would say lip reading get really confused because it gets out of sync. And so we have a system, the system must only work with uh, things up to five milliseconds in advance and no further. So we can't have non-causal processing and we certainly can't have processing where you have a large amount of time for the future being used. So there's a blog post which just details what that latency means. means. Now we don't limit computational power because we're trying to sort of kind of create innovation in this space. So we're happy if you want to use as much power as you want uh, on the assumption that someday that will be available or we'll find a way around it. But we can't get around the latency issue because that's kind of what's happening. So uh, the other thing I would just like to highlight is we have a very good FAQ page. So we'll hopefully set this up so you only have to worry about the speech enhancement bits. But if you want to know more about the details of things you're working with, you'll find things about speech intelligibility, uh, how you can objectively measure it. There's a really good talk down here by James Kate, who was one of the people who developed the two objective models you're using, Haspi and Hasky. And actually, they actually detail how they were developed and what they're used for. So the FAQ page help will hopefully give you some help, but feel free to get in touch with us and uh, we'll hopefully um, uh, see you as a challenger. So good luck uh, with competing and there's the website, claritychallenge.org. Uh, please get in contact with the team. We're a big team. We've got hearing experts, speech experts, machine learners, all sorts of kind of different backgrounds there to help you out. And we're really keen to get as many people involved as possible. And also, please spread the word. If you know someone who would be interested in doing this, uh, please spread the word. Because one of the aims of the Clarity Project is to get more people considering this really important issue of hearing loss.